Okay, so welcome to today's uh, video. Um, I I saw like more than a handful of articles the other weekend on bubble wrap and people making, uh, you know, add-ons to bubble wrap itself. Basically, you know, they the the titles were basically like let's sandbox everything and like you know the this bubble bubble wrap is great and flat pack is great and yada yada yada. And there seems to be some misunderstanding on the security that these things provide out of the box. So we're just going to get into it. Um, there's this actal called Terminal I.O. Control Simulate Terminal Input. So that's what this is. T-I-O-C-S-T-I. -I. Um, you know, geeks love making little crappy acronyms like this. But this is relatively old, too. So uh, just to tell you how old it is, um, all the way back in 1985 uh, was when this kind of started <laughs> started to be aware that this was an issue. Um, and as you can see, we can we can see the Blowfish OBSD's uh, mascot on the left. Um, that's because in 1989, Theodore Rat, which is one of the guys behind um, OBSD, uh, he published a, a pretty infamous exploit um, against SunOS for this. Anyways, the point is, is like this has been a problem for 40 years. <laughs> so it's kind of hilarious and yet concerning that it's still an issue. Um, even today, even as of last weekend, people still think that this isn't an issue and that some, some of their sandboxing tools aren't affected by this. They totally are. So that brings us to this issue, this GitHub issue, CVE 2017-5226. Bubble wrap escape via terminal IO control. Simulate ter terminal input. Say that five times fast. All right, so basically you, you see this little POC, right? And you can see that this issue is closed. Why is it closed if it still works? Well, basically what what the maintainers say in bubble wrap, they basically throw up their hands and they're saying, you know, it's not really our problem. Frankly, if you advertise yourself as a sandboxing tool, which they clearly do right here, um, I think it is your problem. And so, you know, that's that's just my thoughts, right? But let's let's get into the actual code. All right, so this is this is the example. It's basically the same thing. I changed it a little bit simply because I wanted to show, uh, I wanted to compare and contrast bubble wrap against, you know, uh, a, a more hardened isolation that we present through unikernels. So this is the command. And as you can see, um, this command does a ID, which basically sh shows you the user ID and like the, uh, the group ID and, and that sort of thing. And it basically just pipes character by character <laughs> into uh, the FD0 um, set with ioctal. And then we call ID, right? So if we just like run this as is, you can kind of see that it issued two of them, right? And you can see on Linux, um, I have a UID of 1000, UID of 1000. Okay, well that's, that's good. We kind of expect this, right? But, now let's try uh, let's try bubble wrap real quick. So bubble wraps instructions. These are the default out of the box instructions. They say you should do something like this, and I copied this over to tip main too. By the way, um, so we can read through this command real quick. It's bubble wrap row read only bind for lib sixty four lib home bin temp change the directory unshifted ped set my UID to zero, zero obviously is root, um, on Linux systems anyways, we'll get to this. And as you can see, um, the zeros here, okay, so that's what we set it to, but look, it's picking up my 1000, meaning I'm able to escape bubble wrap sandbox, and I'm able to kind of know who the user really is. Okay, so that's kind of bad. And I'll, let me just show this same example again. Um, and this time we're, we're gonna set our ID to you know something else just so you can kind of see here. So here we set it to one, but again, we see that it, 
1000 was outside the sandbox. Um, and so while this is just a proof of concept, what it really shows you is, is that by default, the sandboxing is completely 100% broke. Um, do not rely on this if you're using it for sandboxing, quote, security purposes. It's just simply not giving you the security that you think you are getting. Um, now, I will show you what you can do if you really must use bubble wrap. Basically, what you want to do, I'll turn this back to zero, showcase it, is you want to tack on this new session um, flag right here. And basically what this is doing, or at least what it's telling bubble wrap is, you know, forget this uh, pseudo terminal that I'm in, I want a new session, and that way we're not going to actually, we're not going to regurgitate the contents of, of that ID. So now you can see that we just get zero. In fact, that entire mess that we had earlier, it doesn't even exist, right? So if you must use bubble wrap, do not forget new session. It's absolutely necessary. I just wanna point this out again. July 9th, 2017. It is now April 15. Well, you can't see this, right? Okay, so it's now 2024. So this is like literally, <laughs> this is literally, uh, four plus three, seven freaking years ago when when this was pointed out, and it's still not the default. Um, this is not the only thing that we've seen in these sandboxing programs that purport to offer some sort of security. Um, it, it's just this very lax attitude towards security in general. So I wanted to kind of show you an ops. Um, you can kind of see that it just, uh, it, there's a couple of things going on here. So if we pull back up our program one, um, you don't have this escape anymore. Two, the get UID, and you might not know this unless you've been using nanos uh, before, but there are no actual users in nanos. So even though we're giving you that zero, we're only doing that as a, uh, as, as a convenience method. It doesn't actually have any meaning. And if you want to, you can set this to one or 100 or whatever the hell you want. Um, we do it as a convenience method because there are programs out there that do check for this. And it's funny because we even override this in some of our packages uh, just to kind of skirt the issue. But it doesn't actually give you any like sort of access rights or anything. Um, and it wouldn't make sense to, to have that sort of information anyways. Um, but as you can see, like this particular um, escape that is present uh, simply is not in in the nano unikernel. Anyways, just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, you know, you can let me know what you think in the comments. Till next time. Bye.